Up. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, a big lead like this is comfortable many times, but not when these two teams are matching up. You got to continue to keep your head down, play catch with that catcher, and just try to move through this lineup. The wind of the pitch. Oh, now this is blasted way back there on its way. Gone. His 18th home run of the season, and they cut into the deficit. It's 5 2. Let's break out the stat cast numbers. It's singing. It tells us this home run was projected at more than 450 feet. Yeah, and not many players can hit home runs as far as this one. That's a special feeling, and I'm sure he was giggling a little bit as he was jogging around the bases. That was one heck of a swing he put on the baseball. Alfonso Soriano stepping in now for the Yankees. The wind of the pitch. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. And that's the first out. Nice recovery after giving up the homer. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes, you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error. But some way, you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time. Digging in, Jorge Posada. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. That one is absolutely belted. Pretty well struck. Holds it in on the warning track. Up next for the Yankees, the center fielder, Curtis Granderson. Curtis Granderson stepping in now for the Yankees. Fifth in the American League at RBIs coming in. And a count one and two. And the right hater deals. Out towards left center. Mays ranging to his right. And that'll do it. Yankees get a homer to cut the lead. It's now 5-2. Ready to go, bottom four. And to the plate for Kansas City, Willie Stargell. On the mound, he's got to remember his offense can score a lot. So if he can hit the reset button from here going forward, there's still a chance that his club can win this ball game. Absolutely crushed. And that one is going to land by a van down by the river. A solo shot. Home run number 10 of the year. It's 6-2. That's their fourth home run of the game. They can't stop, and they won't stop hitting home runs in this one, Boog. They're clearly feeding off of each other at the dish. When a guy's got a real hard fastball, you can't overswing. All you've got to do is get the bat head to the spot. If you do, he supplies the power, and you'll get to jog around the bases like he did right there. Number 90 steps in for the Royals. The punch out there, one out in the bottom of the fourth. Frustrating end to the at bat for the hitter, and I'm sure that's going to sit on him for a little while. You want to be ready to hit the fastball. Sometimes you can overthink things, and I think that was the case right there. And now it's Ronald Acuna Jr. The why to kick the pitch. Swings and misses. One and two. Ronald Acuna Jr., a guy who burst on the scene in 2018. He was only 20 years old 
and he is one of the great talents in baseball right now. Absolutely crushed, and that one is going to land by a fan down by the river. That'll fire up the dugout, and they tack on to their lead. It's 7-2, and their fifth home run of the game. Some things in this sport are contagious, Boog, and right now for these guys, clearly it's the long ball. Singy, this was a mammoth home run over 460 feet, according to StatCast. You know, Boog, there are only maybe 20 or so guys in the game that can hit a baseball that far and it's absolutely crazy it's even that many such an impressive swing of the bat right there Ron Guidry gets the call from the pen he's pitching on two days rest so at this point in the ball game we're talking about middle innings and you need a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen we'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper Nicky Lopez up to the plate Next offering misses, and the count to one. Well, I love the fact that he has a lot of fun playing the game, and that rookie year, an OPS of 917, just paving the way for what we think will be a Hall of Fame finish to his career. Two and one now. Swing and a miss. And that is strike two. Incredibly, the Braves able to win the 2021 World Series without Acuna. He blew his knee out, tore his right ACL on July 10th, 2021 in Miami. He was done for the year, and the Braves still able to win it. The pitch. Stays alive. Now a screamer into the outfield. And there's two away. Now back, the designated hitter, Johnny. Damon. Two outs, base is empty. Here's the Royals' designated hitter, Johnny Damon. The pitch. Strike two. Ground ball to the right side. Mattingly steps on the bag, and that is the inning. But the long ball was working in this inning. Not once, but twice. It's now a 7-2 ball game. We go to the top of the fifth, and stepping in for the Yankees, Giancarlo Stanton. Oh, Boogie consistently hits the ball hard. His exit velocity and barrel rate near the tops in the league. Right-hander kicks deals. And a foul ball. Stanton, a guy capable of hitting it a long way. Oh, you can tell how comfortable he is. Look at that front foot on the line as he is close to the plate. But he can be very quick to a pitch that is down and in to the right side wide throw and it gets away now that third baseman John Donaldson here's Josh Donaldson he's a guy that's changed his stance over time it's been a little more open straight up and now more closed one thing hitters will do, it's not so much about the stance, but it's what it does to the brain in terms of resetting and how they approach the pitcher. Swing and a miss. One and, and it's one and two. And he deals. And yeah, the one two Nothing. misses to even the count. Two balls, two strikes. Two two. 
And a foul ball. He stays alive. You could see he was trying to stay back long enough to handle the off-speed pitch, but just a little tardy on the fastball. And a swing and a miss. Down on strikes. One away here in the fifth. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. I mean, with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate, so very difficult to get the barrel on it. Mays puts the squeeze on that one. Out number two they've got a potent lineup and when you think about teams capable of rallying from this kind of deficit they're right at the top of the list Mattingly. man at first and here's the first baseman Don Mattingly singing he's a guy that covers both sides of the plate about as well as anyone in the sport how difficult is that to do well, I'll just look at the back of my bubblegum card. You'll see how hard it is. These guys are great, man. They have the... Dives! What a play! Great diving catch to end the inning after the pitcher battles through a tough one. That'll fire up the dugout. Time to go hit. We head to the bottom of the fifth. Here's the center fielder, Willie Mays. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. Next offering is foul back. Yeah, we go beyond just the you know fielding percentage and you know what it looks like, but the ability to have a range and you know close holes that you know are normally there against an average defender. But this guy is special, and you can see it in his first step quickness. Sheesh, Singy, that was a laser shot. And a good thing we have StatCast to give us the details. Yeah, get out of the way on that one. That ball flew out of the box at 112 miles per hour. You talk about generating a ton of power in that swing. He did it with quick hands, good lower half, and just unloaded on that ball. Now, here is Bobby Witt Jr. Slides, but he can't come up with it. Lead runner holds up. They're at first and second with nobody out. Man, he just absolutely turned on that one, ripped it down the line. Nice job of staying in his mechanics. And next up for the Royals, Salvador Perez. Next offering is foul back. No outs, runners at first and second. Absolutely crushed, and that one is going to land by a van down by the river. So he leaves the yard to left, and they throw three on the board. It's 10-2. to As we get a look at the numbers, StatCast tells us exactly what we were all thinking. This is one of the longest home runs we have ever seen. Yeah, that ended up just shy of 500 feet, which is just, it's absolutely crazy that you can have that kind of pop. And I got a feeling we're going to see this replay for a long, long time. Whitey Ford on the pitch here. He pitched yesterday, and we'll see him once again. Well, I think that what makes him so tough against left-handers is he hides the ball for a long time. And from that same side, harder for you to determine which part of the plate it's going to end up on. So up now for Kansas City, Mike Napoli. The kick, the 3-2. Fouled off again, and it remains 3-2. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. 
Man, that's a tough one to take on the full count, but I guess he saw it really well. It's a really nice plate appearance. Now it's the right fielder, Willie Stargell. The 2-1. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Sometimes being lucky is a swing and miss. If he makes contact with that pitch, probably hits into a double play. Left-hand hitter waits. Swings and misses. And that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically likes to shoot the ball the other way. But that time, a little anxious. Number 90 steps in for the Royals. Two one now. There's a swing and a drive. You can kiss it goodbye. His first homer in the majors, and they're going to have to send somebody to get that ball for him. Always such a special moment. You know this is one of the biggest thrills of his life. He's got to be floating around the bases right now. Yeah, he'll remember every detail of that at bat for years, as he should. It's a true once-in-a-lifetime event. Now, Boog, there's so many times when a young player might wonder if he's ever even going to get to the big leagues and do something like this. Well, he doesn't have to wonder anymore. Here's Acuna now. And a pitch. Stays alive. He's got one already tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if he pops another one here. The 2-2. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Still only one out here in the inning. Swing and a pop-up in foul ground. Donaldson, as this one sized up, makes the grab, two down. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. So the lineup flips over. Nicky Lopez steps in for the Royals. Here's a 1-1. Lifted in the air, right center field. Jackson sizes this one up, pulls it down, and he makes the catch. And that's the inning. But the long ball was working in this inning. Not once, but twice. Five innings complete. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Welcome back. All set for the top of the sixth. And stepping in for the Yankees, Reggie Jackson. Well, every pitcher wants run support, and having a lead is nice, but it can be challenging for some guys. I think keeping the mindset to attack instead of trying to be too fine and have too much finesse, go after hitters and get quick outs. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Picks up strikeout number seven. And next is the designated hitter, Lou Gehrig. And Gehrig hit cleanup for that famed Murderer's Row lineup as the Yankees were rolling off one World Series title after another. Next offering is downstairs. Two and one. And that one handled. Sends it to first. Two quick outs to open the top of the sixth. Now batting, the second baseman, Alfonso Soriano. Here's a speed threat, Alfonso Soriano. Gary hit behind Babe Ruth in those murderers row days. They both have tons of power, but their home runs had much different trajectories. Here's a swing and a drive left field, and he knew it.
his ninth homer of the year, and they're chipping away. It's 12-3. Singy, this was a mammoth home run over 460 feet, according to StatCast. You know, Boog, there are only maybe 20 or so guys in the game that can hit a baseball that far, and it's absolutely crazy. It's even that many. Such an impressive swing of the bat right there. And next for New York, Jorge Posada. Fouled off again, and it remains 3-2. Three balls, two strikes to count. And that one hit to first. They don't come much closer than that. Bang, bang, play to end the inning. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run to the bottom of the sixth inning. Major League Baseball is on the show. Well, we go bottom six. So here's the Royals DH, Johnny Damon. That one to first, Mattingly picks it up, and he handles it himself for the out. The batter, number 24. And to the play for Kansas City, Willie Mays. With this kind of lead, he can swing freely, try to hit the ball out of the park, do what he loves to do. Absolutely crushed, and that one is going to land by a van down by the river. He flexes his power with that swing. Home run number 30 on the year. It's 13-3. Well, I'm not really sure how he kept that fair when you're out in front on a breaking ball like that such a good chance that it's gonna hook foul but not this time he kept the hands moving forward just long enough to sneak it inside that foul pole Chad Green ready to go he comes in with his team trailing by a bunch so he'll try to keep it where it is Now here's Bobby Witt Jr. Absolutely crushed! And that one is gonna land by a van down by the river. His first homer of the year, and they add a run. It's 14-3. And now it's Salvador Perez to the plate, really impacting this series with six runs batted in on four hits. Well struck left field. 
That's back. Makes the catch up against the wall. Now batting. Number 12. And now the first baseman, Mike Napoli. Well, they've kept him pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know you want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come. But you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against him. And a seed into center. That's a base hit. With that fastball, even though it's high velocity, you've got to live on the outer edges. When it's right on a tee, right down the middle, professional hitters are not going to have a problem turning it around. And now the right fielder, Willie Stargell. And the way he's going in this one, we've been waiting for his spot to come around again. All right, listen, everyone, stop what you're doing right now. This guy's got two home runs already. Now he's going for number three. Out to center. Granderson under it puts the squeeze on that one and that'll end the inning but the long ball was working in this inning not once but twice we're through six full you're watching Major League Baseball on the show